Location will be announced at a later date. Uh, youth group, 12 and up. That's, I believe that's on Thursday, is right, Nathaniel? Well, we're not. Well, we're not. No, okay, never Summer mind. Camp. Summer camp is coming up. That's gonna be August 9th to the 15th. There is a registration form for summer camp. That is this thing, kind of small. It is below the bulletin board over in the fellowship hall. If you have kids that'll fit that age group, go sign up. If you want more information, you're gonna wanna look for either Nathaniel, Sarah, or Mike. Could you three all stand up if you're here? So everyone knows, all right. So Nathaniel, Sarah, and then Mike's in the back. Youth group car wash, something we traditionally do every summer to help raise money for the camp. That's going to be July 25th, 10 a.m. through 2 p.m. So bring your car, the kids will wash it. Pretty simple. Uh, again, for more information on that, uh, go see Nathaniel, Sarah, or Mike. And that's all the announcements we have for today. Leave it to the worship team. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Hope Chapel. It's so good to be with everybody today. And honestly, I don't think I'll ever forget that after um, the few months that we had where nobody was able to meet at church. It's, it's such a blessing to come together and to worship and just feel the Holy Spirit move when we're pouring out our songs together. I'm not alone with that. Every Anybody else feel that way? It's just great when God shows up. Oh, yeah. 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 Amen. Just feel the Holy Spirit when you pour out and he just touches you in a special way. And it's just the best. But what happens when that doesn't happen? What about those times that you don't feel God? Which brings me to what I want to talk to you about today. <coughs> what about those times when you don't feel God? You know he's there. You know, he's moving, you can see him being active in other people's lives, but it's just in your own, it feels like he's a million miles away. What do we do? For me, I struggled with this for something like eight years, from the time I finished high school until just about last year. It's when I started to feel God again. I just felt alone. Part of me felt abandoned by God, and it just, it didn't get any easier. And I know I'm not alone with this. I know a lot of other people have felt the same way. A lot of people in this church and a lot of people in the Bible have all experienced the same thing. And even Jesus, one third of God and literal son of God, said when he was dying on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Or in other translations, why have you abandoned me? He felt like God had turned his face away from him. And Jesus was the actual son of God, like equal to God, not considering it something to be scoffed at, but he was actually equal with God and introduced all of us to calling God Father, some sort of intimacy that humanity had never known until that point. But since the reason that it's not that strange for the rest of us to feel the same way. Another big historical figure in the Bible was Job. He had probably the roughest go of it than anybody had. He felt abandoned by God. In Job 23, 8 through 9, he said, If I go forward, he is not there, or backward, I cannot perceive him. On the left, he hides, and I cannot behold him. I turn to the right, and I cannot see him. For a lot of us, that's what it feels like when these times happen. We're doing exactly what God's called us to do. We're doing our best shot, giving it everything we can, but it just feels like nothing. Like, where do you go? But with Job and me and so many other people, we stop, it's not only what we stop being able to feel God, but that's when the trials really start to pile on, right? And for Job, that meant losing literally everything. He's at the time, one of the richest men, and there's some debate as to whether or not he was actually a king, um, but like a multi-billionaire in today's money, and it was all just taken away from him like that. 
bandits came and took all of his possessions. And not only that, a windstorm sent by the devil collapsed the building that his children were in, and they all died. Every one of them. And just to put that proverbial cherry on the Sunday, his wife came and kicked him while he was down and said, why don't you just curse God and die? Just get it out of the way. And that's the last thing we heard about her, so likely she also left after. <laughs> <laughs> Personally, I've been living alone in a place I hated for six years. Um, I meant having my faith really shattered by believing in Christian institutions instead of putting my hope in Jesus and faith in him, I put my faith in them. Uh, and then losing the plans that I had for my future, my dreams, and personally and professionally, they were just snuffed out like light. And I tried everything to reconnect to God. I went down south originally to go to one of the biggest Christian universities in the world because imperfect Christians are the best way to connect with God, right? No. Uh, <laughs> I went to camps and retreats, um, workshops. I read the Bible close to a dozen times in four years. I tried singing worship, but that probably didn't help because I have the tonal ability of a seagull. <laughs> so God was probably just... <laughs> but I prayed in, in earnest with all my heart and soul and just gave everything that I did to God but I felt like I was giving effort to just empty space. And I'm not trying to compare myself to Job, who had it, or anybody else. And there's plenty of people that have had it worse than me, and I don't think anybody compares to the situation Job had. But I wasn't blameless like Job, and God called Job blameless, so it's pretty high praise, but personally I was angry and bitter, and the more things felt out of control, the more angry and bitter that I got. As the trials piled on, the more my imperfections and shortcomings and failures started to rise to the surface. And that just made me ask all the same questions that anybody that's been in the circumstances has asked. God, why me? Why have you turned your face away from me? What have I done to make you leave me? Why can't I feel you anymore? I can see you're working over there, but you're not with me. Aren't there worse people that have done worse things than me? Why aren't they getting this? Why don't you answer me? Now that's the thing about God. He doesn't work on our time. His ways are not our ways. And he has a purpose even when it seems like he isn't present. First Peter 1, 6 through 7 says this, In all this you greatly rejoice, Though now, for a little while, you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. I will stop there, and everybody say, a little while. A little while. Okay. So when I tell somebody I'm going to see them in a little while, okay, we're going to go get coffee today, I'll see you in a little while. I usually mean like 15 or 20 minutes, right? Yeah. But like, like I said, God doesn't work on our time, and his time is totally different. The Bible says to God, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. So... I like math a little bit. Don't tell anybody because they'll pick on me for being a nerd. <laughs> so we assume that God's little while feels like our 15 minutes. And if 24 hours to God feels like a thousand, or a thousand years feels like 24 hours and vice versa, that puts one hour to God being like 41 and two thirds a year. You quarter that to take 15 minutes out, which makes a 15 minute period to God in terms of feeling be 10.4 years. <laughs> so when he says, in a little while, these are the trials and tribulations you're going through, that could be 10 years. <laughs> See, yeah, I'm doing two, I'm two years short. I'm very blessed. <laughs> but let's continue with verse 7. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. And I want to focus on the word gold. So I can't ask you to take off your hand, but would you feel like standing for a second? Okay. Okay, sure. I just hold up your green hand. So tell 
be a bigger ring, but you know, can you tell me the tickets to this or anything like that? Yeah, it's uh, it's worth about twenty eight or three thousand dollars. It's white, gold, platinum, and uh, my wife will shoot me if I ever take it off. <laughs> so, so we're gonna say it's like twenty four. Yeah, sure. Okay. It's just for intensive purposes, I'm gonna change that because of, I don't know enough information about the ring. So if this ring were fourteen carats, that actually means that it is fourteen parts white, gold, and platinum to the other impurities inside of it. Because it's based on a ratio of 24 parts, which is what the carats are. Um, and if we were to heat up this ring to a couple thousand degrees, if we were able to take it off, and besides for Martha shooting us, what would happen? Um, it would melt. Yeah. So then what happens if the, the precious metals melt? All the impurities are gone. They're not gone because they're other metals. Yeah, out. they rise to the surface because the gold is heavier than the rock. Okay. Yeah, it starts to <laughs> rise to the surface, and it just comes and becomes more apparent so that you can actually take out the impurities, and then the gold, the white gold, the platinum in this case would all be able to be pure. So why does God leave us alone, and why does He test us? Why does he refine us by fire to be more than gold? It allows us in those hard times to have our negative character traits, the sin problems, the, the habits that have been troubling our lives and being our stumbling block to rise to the surface. Because that's when they really come out is when you're stressed out. These are the things that we need to focus on and remove in order to live the best life that God has planned. Which brings me all the way back to the beginning. How do I follow God when I don't feel him? And I crack the code. Mm. It's really nice. You do the same thing that you do when you do feel him. You go to church. You pray. You worship. You help your neighbor. But the most important thing that you do during this time is that you notice these character flaws. You ask God to reveal them to you. Search your heart. Know your every anxious thought and lead you in the way of everlasting, that God will help you see them so that you as a person, as a son of God, as a child of God, can help take them away so you can break your own habits. That means if you have bad health, that you go see a doctor, you exercise, you diet, do the right things. If you're bad with money, this is the time to plan your budget. Mm -hmm. This is your time to take Financial Peace University, which mm -hmm. we have going on. <laughs> If you are angry and bitter, this is the time to pray for contentment in your life. And just try to be and inspire to be the person that God wants you to be. And God is a loving Father. And he loves us just the way we are. But like any good Father, he doesn't want us to stay the way we are. He wants us to become better. The best. He wants us to be strong and to be able to stand on our own two feet, which is just like the dad in the video would have found to watch. Everybody has a hero. Hey. Mine's my dad. Since mom died, it's only been us. He has a way of filling my life with color. Sometimes I don't understand his advice, but I trust him. And what always brought us together was our love for running. One day, I'll be faster than him. And when I am, I'm going to win every marathon in the world. be there for me. I guess I was wrong. Dad, where are you? Dad! You abandoned me. Where are you, Dad? Where did you 
go? Do you not love me anymore? Am I so beautiful? Are you no longer proud of me? Abby thinks I've left her. And as much as it pains me to hear that, she's right. I've left her. So we can do the same the actual lies so the cosmetic she doesn't lose. My girl. That's my girl. discover how beautiful she is from the inside out. I've left her to challenge herself in ways she never considered. I've left her to discover how strong she really is. My dad says he gave me what I needed, not what I wanted. <laughs> Love is allowing someone to see their true worth and beauty. I used to think my dreams were over. I thought I'd never run again. And even though I can't see my dad, He's guiding me the entire way. Where's your team if you could start coming back up? <laughs> <laughs> wants us to fulfill the great plans that he has for us, and he believes in us more than anybody else can. Yeah. It's in the times that he lets us feel alone, that he lets us go through the hardships that we don't think we can take because that's how we become strong. That's how we purify ourselves, and that's how we become the people who can change the world. So if you believe that, please stand and worship with me now. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for coming. The Lord bless you.